Okay, well, welcome back. We are going to take a really quick look at Genesis 17. And I know you've read all this before, and we see that Abram's faith is really quite the roller coaster ride. I had that great covenant cutting ceremony in Genesis 15, where God makes this incredible commitment to Abram basically, so be it unto me if I don't come through on my promise to you of this land. And also, you know, count the stars, so shall your offspring be. And we read that Abram believed the Lord, that Abram trusted the Lord, and the Lord counted that to Abram as righteousness, or Abram counted that to the Lord as righteousness, that the Lord would do him right. But we move into chapter 16, and we find Sarai telling Abram, hey, take Hagar, my maidservant, whom she probably got when they were down in Egypt, and have a child with her, because I can't really bear children. And this way you could have an heir. And so it sounds like a good plan to Abram. He doesn't complain or resist. And he takes Hagar and uh, she conceives and Ishmael is born. And, but that wasn't the promised child. That was a child of their doing, not a child of God's promise. And so now we come to chapter 17. And uh, Abram had, uh, Abram took Hagar and had Ishmael at age 86. We come to Genesis 17 and we find that Abram is now 99 years old. Let me go ahead and share the screen here and get the text up on screen for you. And I know you have your own Bible that you can take a look at, but sometimes this is more helpful if I can uh, see my, here we go. So hopefully you can see that, uh, Genesis 17, and we'll just take a look at the first 11 verses. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. So he's 99 now. This whole thing started when he was 75, so 24 years have passed. And we recall that he was 86 when Ishmael was born. And so now this is even 13 years after Ishmael's birth. And so Abram was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I'm assuming at this point that blameless means that he's going to, he is called to trust God completely, wholly trust in the Lord, that I may make my covenant between me and you, <coughs> excuse me, and multiply you greatly. And so the promise of children. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. And so Abram gets his name changed here to Abraham and emphasizing not just a father of one people, uh, Avram, but a father of a multitude of nations, Abraham or Abraham. Um, the Lord goes on to say, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And just a reaffirmation of the promise. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So notice the restatement of the promise of children and land. And all of this is going to happen because God is with them. God is their God. Now, here's where we get something new aside from the name change. Verse 9, God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. And so circumcision was the mark of this covenant. And this is the time where Abraham is called to cut himself and all the males in his household every future generation. And this cutting or this marking would be a sign to them, a constant reminder that they belong to God, that they belong to this covenant. It is a symbol uh, of the 
of the covenant and expressing the reality that apart from God, they really have no future, uh, that the Lord God is their future. And so pretty uh, significant and, and a bug just flew on my screen and I got the bug off. Uh, let me see if I can stop the share. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. And so the covenant was a, a sign to Abram and his generations that they belong to God, that they belong to this promise from God, and that apart from God, they really have no future. Uh, constant reminder. Now, we might compare this to circumcision, or circumcision to baptism in the New Testament. Uh, baptism is what replaces circumcision in terms of this initiation to where it marks us as belonging to the people of God. And so it's a sign of belonging uh, to God, a sign of belonging to the covenant. And again, New Testament, baptism, a sign of belonging, being initiated into the promises of God through Christ Jesus, circumcision, Old Testament, sign of initiation into and belonging to the people of God, the promise to Abraham. Uh, it goes on. Uh, not only does Abraham get a new name, but Sarah is going to get a new name. She's going to move from Sarai to Sarah, and she's going to hear the promise that about this time next year, you're going to give birth to a son, and she laughs, um, but nonetheless, it comes true, and we get the birth of Isaac in Genesis 21. And so that's all we'll cover on here. I know you've read it. Uh, you've seen the kind of up and down faith journey of Abraham and Sarai, or Sarah, uh, but God is faithful to them and they recognize slowly but surely that they belong to God and apart from God, they really have no future. So I'm gonna close this one out and then we are going to move to Genesis chapter 22. So thank you for watching and I'll get this one ended and then we will get back soon.